Welcome back guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you guys how I created this pudding artwork in Adobe Photoshop. Keep in mind guys, I am explaining key steps which I took to create this artwork, but this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial for a beginner, all right? Okay, so let's get started. First, I have divided the artwork into groups and I have created a background group and placed a layer inside that group. And this is going to be the background and I have choose a gradient for the background. To simulate lights and shadows, one side I use a lighter blue tone and other side I use a darker blue tone. At this point, these are not the exact colors I'm going to use. This is just to have an idea for the rest of the artwork so we can place lights and shadows properly for the rest of the artwork. Then I have created a new layer group and placed an ellipse in an oval shape for the plate and took out the stroke for the oval shape. Once I done with the plate, I have moved on to a new layer group and inside this group, I have created two oval shape ellipse and an rectangle and use the direct selection tool to modify the rectangle like you see in the screen to get the basic shape of the pudding. Once I satisfied with the shape, I use the shape major tool to combine all three shapes together. Then I rescale the pudding shape to get the proper proportion and made a copy and change the colors closer to caramel sauce. Next step, I move on to draw the caramel sauce on top. Before that, I draw an ellipse to identify the pudding top portion very easily. Once I had the reference in the correct place, I started drawing the caramel sauce. And for this, I have used the pen tool in Photoshop to draw the floating caramel sauce. Once done with the shape, I have deleted the reference ellipse. Then I change the shape color to caramel sauce color, same as earlier, and use the intercept shape tool to delete unnecessary portions. Then I have used direct selection tool to modify the anchor points to get a proper caramel sauce shape I wanted. Then again, I move to the bottom caramel sauce. For this one also, I have used the pen tool in Photoshop to draw the shape. Next step, I have moved to create the cherry on top. And for this one, same as others, I have created its own layer. Inside, I use the basic ellipse shapes to draw the cherries. Very simple and easy process. And for decoration, let's have some more leaves underneath the cherries. For this, I have used the pen tool again to get the basic leaf shape. And same as other objects I drawn earlier, I have only kept the fill color for each of these shapes. I have deactivated all the strokes. I also made a copy from this leaf for other side and made some changes to the shape using the direct selection tool. So that's all for the drawing of this artwork. Here onwards, let's add some details and lights and shadows to get the artwork a little bit more realistic. First, starting from the background, I need to add some more different variation of colors to get this artwork pop out because now it's look very flat. So I have used some colors to make the center subject pop up and also to keep the background a little bit more realistic with the lighting. Once done, next I move to the shadow of the plate. For this, I have used a darker tone of blue color, almost closer to purple, and used the box spur tool to make it like a shadow. And then I have placed the shadows in the correct place based on the light source. Next step, adding lighting and shadows and more details to the plate. I have duplicated and scaled ellipse shapes from the original source shape and based on the light source, I have used dark and lighter tones to get the perfect reflection and refraction based on the light source. And I also use the pen tool to create additional details based on the light and reflection and refraction. To get the smooth transition of colors, I have used box blur smart filters to these shapes. And additionally, these are smart objects, so you can double click to open in a new tag to change the colors or add in more features, So, which comes handy when you work on an artwork like this. Next step, 
I'm moving on to the caramel sauce on the bottom. In here, I will start from the shadow, from the pudding itself. This shadow should appear on top of the plate. So I have used the same method as the bottom shadow. But this time, instead of a shape, I have used the lasso tool to create a new layer. And I place a blue color onto that lasso selection. Use the box blur to get the shadow. And I use the player blending mode to get the blending of colors right. Next step, adding details to the bottom caramel sauce. I have started adding a new layer and on top of that new layer, I also added gradient overlay. So for the gradient colors, I have choose dark and light the tone based on the lighting of the overall image. For this, I also considered the placement of the top and bottom surfaces and, and the reflection from the pudding and the plate itself. For the bottom shape, I have kept it darker than the top shape. This is because of the placement of these objects based on light. And then I have moved to draw the highlights and reflections. For reflections and highlights, I have used the pen tool mostly and also some places I have used the lasso tool and fill them with darker and lighter colors. And finally, I use the curves to do some touch up. And based on these colors, we can move forward to the top portions. Okay, next I move to the pudding. And first thing what I did was instead of having a very perfect oval shape in the bottom, I added some anchor points and made it a little bit more curvy like this. Because in real life, you won't get perfect oval shapes or circles for organic objects, all right? And afterwards, similar to earlier, I have added gradient overlay to the pudding and changed the colors to match the pudding colors. And then I flatten the layer and play with the curves and color balance to get the perfect pudding color as much as possible. Once this is done, I have created a new layer. And for this layer, I have applied a background color and I have added a noise filter as well. Change the noise to black and white and adjust the layer to fit into the pudding shape. And then I went into the blending modes and apply a color burn so that we can have the pudding texture on top of the pudding shape. Finally, I used the curve to get the colors right and then made a copy of the caramel shape on top. And for this copy, I have made a darker tone and made a box blur and deleted the overlapping portions from the top. For this, I have used the bottom layer putting as the selection. This portion is the soak in part of the caramel sauce into the pudding. And then let's add some more textures and colors into the pudding because now it's look very flat and smooth. For this, I have used the lasso tool and copy some portions from the pudding and change the curves to get the colors bright and dark. And then I moved on to the caramel sauce on top. And again, similar to earlier, I went in and edit the overlay gradient and get those colors from the bottom caramel sauce. I have edited in a way to place the light in the correct size. So the highlighted portion will be in the correct side. Same for the shadows in the correct side as well. And then I have made the shape as a flattened regular layer and made a copy of that layer. And for that layer, I have applied a small box blur. Finally, I have used the mask to show and hide the focused area and unfocused area. To make the focused area clear, I have used the mask to hide the layer with box blur. Finally, I merged both of these layers together as one layer. Next step is adding highlights and shadows to the top 
most part of the pudding and the floating area. This is pretty simple. Same as earlier, lasso tool to create new layers with lighter colors and also pen tool in Photoshop to create lighter portions, reflection areas and darker shadow areas as well so started from the top where the shadow is going to be and then i move on to the reflection areas for them i have applied lighter colors and use the box blur in some places to get the perfect blending with the original object i also use layer blending modes to get smooth transition of colors Next step, I have added highlights and shadows to the cherry. Same as following previous steps, I use the same method. Add gradient overlay to the base color. And from there onwards, I have used the pen tool and lasso tool to apply the lighter and darker portions of the cherry. And then I have made them all as one object and use the color balance to get some brighter tones from the original colors. Once I satisfied, I have made some copies and place it in different places with different sizes to match our previous design. And then I have added the reflection by copying and mirroring these cherries. The part which is underneath the caramel sauce, I have cut in a small portion from both sides as well. Same in here, I have cut the underneath portion a bit and place it a little bit further away to show that it's underneath the caramel sauce. And I have added a darker tone compared to the top portion. Finally, I want to make these cherries even more brighter. So I have applied brightness and curve layers on top of cherries. These I made only to affect the cherries. And I have made some copies from the cherries and place it on top of the plate in the bottom. And use the curves to match the colors based on the placement. And next is leaves. For leaves, again, I have applied gradient overlay. And for these gradient, I have used different tones of green. And again, similar to earlier, these greens are based on the lights placement of this artwork. So based on the light source, I have placed the lighter and darker tone in here for the both side. In addition, I also use the pen tool to draw some details in here. Use the lasso tool to make some lighter and darker shades easily and to draw the reflection. And finally, for the leaves, I have used a texture using the pattern overlay. This pattern is a basic pattern from Photoshop. I didn't change or add in anything. Just use the pattern and rescale it to get the leaves look a bit more realistic. And then I made a copy from the leaf and place it in the bottom and use the wrap tool to make the size a little bit more different than the top. And also use a copy and use and use gradient masking to make the reflection. Reflection of these leaves on the plate. All right, so we have already added all the details to these objects and then the final touch up. For the final touch up, I have used basically mostly lasso tool to create colors on top of these layers and use blending modes and color balance to get to get the exact colors I wanted in different places. So for this, I have considered the light, shadows and the surface of these objects, how it will react based on the light source. And finally, I have used the camera raw filter in Photoshop and adjust the highlights, shadows, texture, details and color balance. And once I satisfied, this is the final results.
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And this is a, not a step-by-step -step video or a time-lapse video. Some of you want a tutorial videos and some of you want to watch only speed art videos. So I have created this format to satisfy both of you guys. You guys can watch and learn steps if you want. And also if you guys only wanted to watch speed art videos, you can watch this video as well. So what do you guys like about this new format? If you guys like this, I will do more videos in this format. Beside this format, there will be more tutorial videos coming in in both illustrator and photoshop if possible in other applications as well thank you so much for watching and if you guys want to support this channel please consider checking out my patreon page in here you can find the link under the description below